The Art of Public Speaking by Dale Carnegie and Joseph Berg Asenwein, Section 41, Appendix D, Speeches for Study and Practice, John W. Westcott, nominating Woodrow Wilson. At the National Democratic Convention, Baltimore, Maryland, June 1912. The New Jersey delegation is commissioned to represent the great cause of democracy and to offer you, as its militant and triumphant leader, a scholar, not a charlatan, a statesman, not a doctrinaire, a profound lawyer, not a splitter of legal hairs, a political economist, not an egotistical theorist, a practical politician who constructs, modifies, restrains, without disturbance and destruction, a resistless debater and consummate master of statement, not a mere sophist, a humanitarian, not a defamer of characters and lives, a man whose mind is at once cosmopolitan and composite of America, a gentleman of unpretentious habits, with the fear of God in his heart, and the love of mankind exhibited in every act of his life. Above all, a public servant who has been tried to the uttermost and never found wanting, matchless, unconquerable, the ultimate Democrat, Woodrow Wilson. New Jersey has reasons for her course. Let us not be deceived in our premises. Campaigns of vilification, corruption, and false pretense have lost their usefulness. The evolution of national energy is towards a more intelligent morality in politics and in all other relations. The situation admits of no compromise. The temper and purpose of the American public will tolerate no other view. The indifference of the American people to politics has disappeared. Any platform and any candidate not conforming to this vast social and commercial behest will go down to ignominious defeat at the polls. Men are known by what they say and do. They are known by those who hate and oppose them. Many years ago, Woodrow Wilson said, No man is great who thinks himself so and no man is good who does not try to secure the happiness and comfort of others. This is the secret of his life. The deeds of this moral and intellectual giant are known to all men. They accord not with the shams and false pretenses of politics, but make national harmony with the millions of patriots determined to correct the wrongs of plutocracy and re-establish the maxims of American liberty in all their regnant beauty and practical effectiveness. New Jersey loves Woodrow Wilson, not for the enemies he has made. New Jersey loves him for what he is. New Jersey argues that Woodrow Wilson is the only candidate who can not only make democratic success a certainty, but secure the electoral vote of almost every state in the Union. New Jersey will endorse his nomination by a majority of 100,000 of the liberated citizens. We're not building for a day or even a generation, but for all time. New Jersey believes that there is an omniscience in national instinct. That instinct centers in Woodrow Wilson. He has been in political life less than two years. He has had no organization, only a practical ideal, the reestablishment of equal opportunity. Not his deeds alone, not his immortal words alone, not his personality alone, not his matchless powers alone, but all combined compel national faith and confidence in him. Every crisis evolves its master. Time and circumstance have evolved Woodrow Wilson. The North, the South, the East, and the West unite in him. New Jersey appeals to this convention to give the nation Woodrow Wilson, that he may open the gates of opportunity to every man, woman, and child under our flag. 
by reforming abuses and thereby teaching them, in his matchless words, to release their energies intelligently, that peace, justice, and prosperity may reign. New Jersey rejoices, through her freely chosen representatives, to name for the Presidency of the United States the Princeton Schoolmaster Woodrow Wilson. Section 41. Recording by Paul Adams.